My name is Michael Schnitzler and I am from Austria. For the past 50 years I have been a professional classical violinist. For the past 20 years I have also been an environmentalist and that is what this film is about. It all started during a holiday trip to Costa Rica. The 56 square mile Esquinas Rainforest, known today as Piedras Blancas National Park, is part of a biological corridor around the Golfo Dulce, connecting Corcovado National Park with the Golfito Wildlife Refuge. Until 1991, it was the last unprotected tropical forest on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. The forest was owned by around 140 farmers from the surrounding villages who had the right to cut the trees as long as the forest belonged to them. They were in possession of official logging permits. They were allowed to build logging roads and extract a certain amount of tropical hardwood every year. In 1991, the Costa Rican government declared the area as Piedras Blancas National Park, but it remained a so-called paper park because there were no funds to purchase the land. Park director Alvaro Ugalde asked me whether I could find help in Austria, and the same year I founded the non-profit organization Rainforest of the Austrians. My goal was to raise money to purchase properties and then donate them to the Costa Rican government. No one was expropriated. Each landowner sold his property voluntarily for a fair price that was specified by the government. Other NGOs and the Republic of Costa Rica itself joined our campaign and also purchased land within the Esquinas forest. In 25 years, thousands of Austrians, including children from over 300 schools, donated more than $4 million and enabled us to save 10,000 acres of rainforest. In the remote Bonito Valley, only one single farm remained inhabited, completely surrounded by the National Park. This is where the first photo of a jaguar was taken in 2010. It was very important to me that the whole valley was returned to its original pristine state. And I was very relieved when I was able to present the owners with a check for almost half a million dollars. The very next day, the owners dismantled their house and towed every single board down the river to the nearest road. By the end of 2016, 72% of the Esquinas forest had been saved, of which 10,000 acres have been purchased with donations from Austria. Logging permits are no longer issued. Since the forest is no longer in danger, we are concentrating our efforts on buying land in the biological corridor outside the National Park. One day I might be playing a concert with the Haydn Trio in Europe and two days later I might be in a discussion with park authorities in Costa Rica. I negotiate contracts with loggers and notaries. I visit illegal gold miners and park wardens. I argue with hunters and I often meet with other NGOs, lawyers and sometimes even ministers. To protect the national park, park rangers are required to confiscate illegally felled trees and chase poachers. Since 2003, Rainforest of the Austrians has been paying the salaries for two park rangers, and in 2008 we funded the construction of a ranger station in La Gamba. Today, 16 rangers patrol the national park and illegal hunting has decreased. Fifty years ago, poaching caused the last scarlet macaws to disappear from the Esquinas rainforest. 
In 1998, the Foundation for the Restoration of Nature, financially supported with a grant of $40,000 from Rainforest of the Austrians, began a unique project to repopulate the national park with these colorful parrots. The birds are raised in captivity and brought to large cages where they become accustomed to the jungle before being released. In 2009, macaw number 100 was let free, and since then many chicks have hatched. Piedras Blancas National Park now has a healthy, survivable population of scarlet macaws. But also hundreds of other confiscated or orphaned animals have been released, including endangered species like squirrel monkeys or ocelots. Organizations such as Yaguara or Oza Conservation are working hard to protect the severely endangered population of wild cats on the Osa Peninsula and in the Esquinas Rainforest. We have been helping them to buy camera traps and radio cracking collars, and we support their educational programs in the area. In 2011, the evaluation of a camera trap near Esquinas Rainforest Lodge resulted in a big surprise. For the first time, a jaguar and a tapir were photographed on one of our trails. By selling endangered species certificates and paying the salaries of park rangers, we have raised and donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to protect the wildlife of the Esquinas rainforest. In 1993, Rainforest of the Austrians purchased an old farmhouse in La Gamba to serve as a base for research and study projects in the Esquinas rainforest. Since then, Austrian biologists Werner Huber and Anton Weissenhofer have turned La Gamba Field Station into an internationally acclaimed research and educational institution, now owned by an Austrian non-profit organization and run by the University of Vienna. In 1993, the same year as the founding of the research station, Esquinas Rainforest Lodge was constructed on a level piece of pasture land at the end of La Gamba Valley and surrounded by Piedras Blancas National Park. The Austrian government had commissioned Rainforest of the Austrians to administrate an ecotourism project in La Gamba, with the idea of creating new jobs, bettering the living standard of the local people, and offering a new source of income as an alternative to logging. Esquinas Lodge was opened in 1994. By mid-2017, we will have a total of 18 rooms in 9 cabins, as well as an isolated jungle villa with kitchen. Our manager couple, Julia Wurt and Fernando Barantes, are doing their best to maintain our reputation as a prize-winning eco-lodge. The Costa Rican Tourism Board has awarded Esquinas the cherished Certificate of Sustainable Tourism. By planting thousands of trees as part of La Gamba Tropical Station's reforestation project, we have been certified as a carbon-neutral hotel. La Gamba, a village of around 400 inhabitants, is surrounded by nature reserves. Unemployment is high and the standard of living is low. There is a problem with crime, drug abuse, and poaching. Esquinas Lodge and the Biological Station are the largest employers in La Gamba. Support for the village is one of our most important objectives. School children visit Esquinas Lodge. Biologists from the Biological Station give lectures for the children. Guests from Austria donate school equipment. Children dance for the guests and the lodge supports the local soccer team. The La Gamba Fund, founded in 2005, has the goal of improving the life of the people by implementing and financially supporting community projects. Since then, we have donated $200,000 for projects in La Gamba. The water system for 70 houses was renewed, the school was renovated and equipped with new furniture, toilets and a kitchen. 
a covered playground was built. The town hall was renovated and a health station was constructed. And in the background behind the soccer field, one can make out the police station and the office of the town committee, also constructed with donations from Iskina's Lodge. All the buildings marked in red and white were made possible by donations from Austria. Each hectare of tropical rainforest captures 600 tons of carbon dioxide from the Earth's atmosphere. During its lifetime, every single tree binds 750 kilograms of the dangerous greenhouse gas. In 2009, and as a contribution to the fight against global warming, rainforest of the Austrians and Lagamba Biological Station began with the reforestation of pasture land in and around Lagamba. Seedlings from the surrounding forest are grown in greenhouses, and volunteers from Austria and Lagamba bring them to the land previously purchased by Rainforest of the Austrians, where they are planted. This meadow was planted with thousands of trees in 2009, and only one year later, a young forest had appeared. Some of the trees had reached a height of four meters, and the reforestation was so successful that we decided to concentrate our future efforts on reforestation projects outside the National Park. In 1997, the countries of Central America and international organizations began an ambitious project to connect 600 nature reserves and create a so-called biological corridor, all the way from Mexico to Panama. In Costa Rica, the Mesoamerican Biological Corridor is split into two parts. One runs along the coastline and the other through the high mountains. From La Gamba, one can see up to the 5,000 foot high forested mountain ridge called Fila Cruces, which is part of the Mesoamerican Corridor. The Fila Cruces is still covered with dense, untouched, but also unprotected forest. This is the watershed of many rivers, including the Rio Esquinas, which flows down to the Golfo Dulce and forms the northern border of the rainforest of the Austrians. The view from the Fila Cruces stretches over Piedras Blancas National Park to the Golfo Dulce and the Osa Peninsula. These mountain forests and the coastal forests used to be connected with each other, but now the corridor is interrupted by farmland and pastures and the remaining forests are in danger. La Gamba Research Station and Rainforest of the Austrians have made it their goal to create a biological corridor by purchasing land and planting trees. When we purchased Finca Amable in La Gamba in 2010, it was a pasture totally barren of trees. In 2011, a drainage canal was dug on the swampy land, and in the ensuing years, 11,000 trees from over 100 species were planted. After only two years, a young forest had appeared, and by 2014, the rainforest was so dense that it was nearly impossible to walk through. Since, rare animals such as ocelots and pumas have been sighted on Finca Amable. The next goal was the purchase of three farms on the Rio Esquinas beneath the Fila Cruces, with a total area of over 300 acres. From 2009 to 2016, we have invested over $1 million in land purchase and reforestation in the Biological Corridor, also known as Cobiga. By planting thousands of trees, a new rainforest was created, capturing thousands of tons of carbon dioxide from the Earth's atmosphere and providing a shelter to endangered animals. In order to continue these projects, we must rely on donations and we are deeply grateful for any support.